Hello, and welcome to the fourth video in the Getting Started with the STA UHD Producer Plugin video tutorial series. The UHD Producer Plugin, made by Sonic Tier Audio, is a new panning plugin that allows for flexible panning and monitoring of immersive formats that Pro Tools doesn't directly support. Surround panning is different than traditional stereo production, and this is taken literally to another level when height channels come into play. This tutorial will look at the basics of surround panning versus stereo panning and how it's done using the STA UHD Producer plugin. To really appreciate the flexibility and power of surround mixing, it's good to take a look at the challenges of stereo mixing, challenges we've all come to take for granted as the way things are. We're looking at the pan window of the STA UHD Producer plugin. As we discussed in the first video in this tutorial series, imagine this panning field as a 3D room that you're looking down on from the ceiling. The top of the field is the front of the room, and the bottom of the panning field is the rear of the room. In this case, we're looking at a stereo speaker output. Now, of course, Pro Tools also supports stereo panning natively, so the STA UHD Producer plugin might not be your go-to for a simple stereo project, but let's stay in this window throughout this tutorial for consistency's sake. The only positioning that you have available to you is between a single left speaker and a single right speaker. That means that your mixing field is a single straight line between these two speakers, a simple x-axis. This also means that your entire soundscape has to be accomplished by these two speakers, a limitation we've learned to live with over the years, but that bring on a number of mixing challenges. The work that we do in order to not only blend and position the elements of our mix, but also the use of dynamic effects, EQ, and time-based effects to reduce the interference between similar elements, things like kick drums and basses, is something that can take a lot of time to get just right. It's also worth noting that since there's no discrete center speaker, we only have the phantom center to work with. Center positioning is achieved by having identical signals coming from both speakers at equal volume. That means that getting maximum clarity out of the center positioned elements of your mix can be an additional challenge in some cases. After stereo, the first surround formats you're likely to run into are 5.1 and 7.1, also supported natively in Pro Tools as well as the STA UHD Producer plugin. Now, instead of a single line that must hold your entire soundscape, you've got a two-dimensional plane with left, right, left rear surround, and right rear surround speakers representing the corners of this square or rectangular panning field. In both 5.1 and 7.1, you have a center channel speaker between the left and right speakers, giving you the ability to have a distinct center channel, primarily used for dialogue, but not exclusively so. With 7.1, you also have left side surround and right side surround speakers to provide for more clarity with sounds that are panned along the front to rear axis. Even with these relatively simple surround formats, your mixing possibilities will increase greatly. Not only do you have the dramatic effect of placing audio elements into a more immersive space, but your mixing will become simpler in many ways, since you can use simple panning to separate your elements rather than the mixing tricks that we often use to achieve similar separation with a stereo mix. The next evolution in surround comes in the form of adding yet another axis, height dimension. Now, instead of a 2D plane as your panning field, you now have a three-dimensional box and your panning becomes volumetric. 9.1 and 11.1 output setups add left front height, right front height, left rear height, and right rear height channels. A 10.2 output includes a center rear height channel as well as a second LFE channel, effectively creating a left LFE and a right LFE. From a production perspective, this continues a positive trend and is even more of a good thing. These formats not only give you more dynamic placement of audio, but allow for even more separation and clarity. So how does this all figure into Pro Tools? It's pretty straightforward, actually. Let's start out with stereo panning. Since positioning is only done along a single axis, you have a single left-right panning automation lane. Since we only have one axis to work with, writing pan automation using the pencil tool in a stereo mix is a viable way of working and is frequently done in addition to moving the pan knob. Things get a bit more complicated with 5.1 and 7.1. Now we have front position, rear position, and front to rear positioning. That's three different automation lanes, and you can see here that the interaction between these automation lanes to create a two-dimensional position can get fairly complex. Though you can still do pencil-based panning, we see mouse-based or joystick-based panning being done more frequently. Once we introduce height channels, where the SDA UHD Producer plugin really shines, let's see how volumetric panning is achieved using this plugin. 
Here again, we have three automation lanes simply organized around the different positional axes with channel X being for left right positioning, channel Y for front rear positioning, and channel Z covering height. Here again, when we move things along multiple axes at the same time, things can get quite complex. So how is panning done in the STA UHD producer plugin? Let's start off with the positional knobs at the bottom of the pan window. These knobs are very good for moving your signal along a straight line, as you can see here. As I am adjusting each of these knobs, you're seeing automation data being written on each of the three automation lanes. If you're not using the knobs for panning, you're probably using mouse-based, also called joystick panning, dragging the position cursor to the desired location. You can see here that this creates automation on multiple lanes. This is the route to go if you're looking for a specific signal path that you can perform in real time. Here's a bit of a hybrid approach. Let's say that you want to constrain your motion, but you also want to be able to use your mouse to drag the position cursor. The STA UHD producer plugin makes it easy with the three axis lock buttons located in the upper left corner of the plugin window. Click the X lock button and you're only able to change Y and Z values. If you click the Y lock button, then you can only change position for the X and Z axis. You get the picture. You can even lock two axes simultaneously. For example, I'm locking the X and Y axis, in which case I can only change height. Before we wrap things up, let's see something a little unconventional in the way that the STA UHD producer plugin deals with multi-channel tracks. That's stereo, 5.0, or 7.0 tracks. In these kinds of tracks, the channels are linked together by a rotational hub, which you can see here as a white target icon. All channels of a multi-channel track are linked by this hub. If you move the hub by dragging with your mouse, all of the channels of the track, in this case, the left and right channels of a stereo track, will move together. Conversely, moving any of the individual channel icons will also affect the hub and the other channels on the track. This can be a convenience in some cases, but a hindrance in others. If you have a multi-channel track with which you want to have independent channel control, it's recommended that you split the track into mono and instantiate mono STA UHD producer plugins on the inserts of those tracks. And that takes us to the end of our discussion on basic panning using the STA UHD producer plugin. Other videos in this series will look more into depth at how to set up your Pro Tools session, different features, and even some tips and tricks. To learn more, visit sonictieredu.com slash learning.